Ladies and gentlemen, have you ever been in a situation where you wanted to share, desperately share something important to someone else, someone you trust, but you constantly have the feeling that while your conversation partner is listening, he or she is not taking your message really seriously and that because of that you keep repeating your message for a certain time but after a while you just give up? Well, that feeling predominates in Bach's E minor prelude, at least at the beginning, because in the middle of the piece something completely unexpected happens, something that might be even a kind of life lesson for us, who knows? All of that is packed into this beautiful prelude. So welcome to another episode of Beyond the Notes. Hello everyone, my name is Wim Winters. I play the clavichord, I play the organ, the forte piano. We do a lot of research to music from Bach to Beethoven and beyond. Just right now I'm recording this video at the beginning of March 24. We are about to release all Beethoven symphonies in a beautiful box with 10 CDs. All symphonies played in what we call whole beats, a completely new vision, a new perspective on Beethoven's music. There is a lot more than the CDs, we created even the full Beethoven experience. And I know if you clicked on this video you might be more into the music of Bach, but trust me, that Beethoven version will bring Beethoven more to Bach, will connect Beethoven more to Bach than you might expect. So check it out, link in the description box, as is the link in the description box to guide you to the CDs that I made. That's the version uh, that you heard at the beginning and I will be using my version of the WTC, this beautiful 3CD box, to showcase the fragments that we will talk about. So check also that one out in the description box and now without further ado let's dive into this magnificent prelude in E minor. So at the beginning of this piece we have the two elements, the two elements that I was talking about at the beginning of this video. One person sharing a message, desperately wanting to be heard, the other person actually listening but giving the impression that he's not really understanding what the other person is actually saying. We will see later in this piece if that is really the case. So the, the person listening is definitely here the left hand, it's the bass. It's a very repetitive motive. Coming back the entire piece. With this very slow harmonic progression, we will talk about that later, giving the impression, already setting the mood for something serious, gives a little bit this mysterious impression, but more than that, there is something going on. And what's going on is of course the right hand, where you have long notes at the beginning of the bar, sometimes these long notes take an entire bar, and they are connected with some ornaments that are specifically designed to enhance the message. So, in terms of melody, not much has happened. When I leave out these ornaments, you barely have a melody. It's not much. Not saying this is not a beautiful melody, but already now I'm in bar 9. So the ornaments that connect these long notes, these solemn notes, if you wish, are giving, as I said, the impression, give, they, they built the character of the piece, this drama, this is really the message. The message is here not, partly it is in the long notes, but it's not really there, it's in what is in between the notes. And then in bar 3 you have these more notes, capriches, like baroque motifs, like of course it's baroque music, but Bach is using that as an expressive tool. So each time you have long notes, a very simple, solemn melody, and there is a bridge there is something, there is a pattern that connects these notes in combination with the left hand, repetitive left hand, with a very simple harmonic structure, this creates the entire mood of the piece. Let's listen. Mm -hmm. 
And so the left hand, as I said, is very static, seemingly taking a distance from the message of the right hand. The question is if that is the case. What is the case at the beginning? There is a clear direction. It's the left hand. Yeah, it's listening, but it's also guiding. Like harmonically, this is a very simple pattern and the bass notes have only one direction. It's always going down. And if you are longer here on this channel, you will know that in Baroque patterns, when lines go down, it's, it's not good. It's like a sign, it's like a cry, it's like a cry for help. And so already there we have an element that gives us a clue if that left hand really is not paying attention. It's not participating with these capricious bridges that the right hand makes, like to enhance the message. But it is there, it's steadily, steadily there, and it's going down. So what I'm doing now is just play the harmonies. makes an octave jump obviously you cannot go down all the time but it, it actually the harmony goes down from down also in bar 10 here's C major so the harmonies the harmonic progression is actually leading to a build up of more and more tension harmonic tension, but that of course translates in also emotional tension. And in combination with that right hand that is allowed all the space to make its story, while maybe that right hand, that person gets the impression that the left hand is not listening, slowly but steadily we see a different story. Let's just listen a few bars and pay attention to the left hand how the harmony is taking, is guiding the story in a certain direction. And what that direction is, we will see later. arrive at this magical spot. It starts in bar 18. So the left hand as accompanying the right hand literally but also in terms of messaging. But in bar 18 there is an important harmonic change and you could say like okay this is just a baroque sequence that we know. Yes. Like the D natural. This is of course simply the dominant 7 uh, with the D natural and the bass. This is going to lead to the cadence of the piece. Like we are going now to a little bit of Baroque drama, more, and there is a cadence. And so the right hand is just continuing, but of course, if you are talking to a partner, to your partner, to your conversation partner, and you get the impression like after a whole page of trying to penetrate in the other person's mind, and you have the feeling like, okay, but it's not gonna work. Um, so you end the conversation and you accept, 
as the music, as here in the music also is the case, you accept the guidance of your other person that you're talking to as coming to a closure. So the conversation really comes to a closure here. Like a last moment of very dramatic uh, flavor. What an intervals. But there is no, there is no other direction any more possible than to go to the, what seemingly will be the finish of the piece, the end of the piece. One last attempt. It's actually giving up here. Trill. There we have it. E minor. Where we had low notes at the beginning lasting half a bar with the bridge maximum one bar and then something happens now we have one long e it's just there for two bars the right hand the person that wanted to make a statement that wanted to share the story he gives up or she gives up but then something happens finally the left hand the accompaniment so to say finally reveals what has been the purpose what has been the goal from the beginning. Now it becomes clear, because instead of accepting, accepting the E minor as an end of the piece, we have this. Question mark. Now we come to the presto. Let's listen how that sounds in the recording. So you have heard the explosion of emotion that happens where Bach writes presto. And now just a quick side note on tempo. What I did in this piece was taking something that, for instance, Quanz is writing, where he says, Allegretto is half of the tempo of Allegro assai. And I took half of the tempo at the beginning and I'm doubling for the presto here. By doubling this tempo, everything seems to be on fire suddenly. And it's not only the tempo. There are no long notes anymore in the right hand. And the left hand is participating suddenly in the discussion, a hundred percent. It was almost unannounced. So you have... So different compared to the beginning. like as if the right hand has to hurry because suddenly the left hand says the bass says like hey I was there all the time I was listening this is my interpretation this is this is what I have to say to you can we talk about this because now I fully understand what you had in mind and the right hand who already gave up like okay we came to the end of the conversation now says okay yeah, yeah, of course I'm participating and it's, it's hurrying the left hand here is guiding of course you still in the left hand you have still this harmonic steadiness But it's now fully ornamented, left hand, right hand, all 16th notes. And of course also the right hand, it doesn't have any more these long notes, but it's, they are still there, but hidden in the 16th note. So listen to a fragment and try to focus also, and especially I would say to these harmonic notes in the bass and still the melody in the right hand. The clavichord, of course, is an instrument that allows you to very easily, you know, play these notes a little bit louder. Let's listen. And 
and then after half a page here of like a lot of gems, a lot of drama, a lot of conversation between left and right hand, also it becomes like a fully two-voiced piece now. While in the previous section we still had had harmonic chords that were participating or like emphasizing a little bit the harmonic strength of the bass. Now it's just a two-voiced piece for a while. But in bar 33 something happens again. So we reach in bar 32 like a very dramatic moment. Always when you have augmented four greats and like leading to the dominant, it's always like adding something of a flavor of super drama, but also a drama in the sense that, you know, this announces something, a statement. Like we're going now in a direction that is probably more likely than not going to be the end of the piece. But here something happened. So we have this in bar 32. And then happens this in bar 33. This is, this is a clear statement, like C in the bass here, and then the bass just stops. It gives the spotlights, it gives the room to the right hand. No bass anymore. So the right hand suddenly gets the spotlights, as I said, is using that space making his statement or her statement again, probably her, it's his soprano, and after that, the left hand, the bass, comes to the B, which is the dominant, and then we have the long notes again. And the B stays. I'm just playing the long notes. with the line, a little bit of friction, climbing up, climbing higher, this is 6th grade in E minor, it's a, like, I don't know the term in English, it's like a surprise, closing, left hand, right hand, contrary motion, meeting each other in the middle, very symbolic, it is as if like God and mankind come together and like form a unity. That's really the Baroque symbolic language. So here. And of course, Bach, spring, Bach brings you home, always. And between these harmonic lines and these long notes, you still have this like very capricious like So you, Bach creates a combination of everything that was in the piece, comes to a climax, and brings it home. Let's listen. brings you home after a roller coaster of emotions it's what makes his music partly so great because at the end you have learned something about yourself you have or you had the impression that you were speaking to someone someone actually reflecting things that we all feel and it's not the language that this has to be processed it's that need to be processed by our brain it's the language that we can just feel and that's so powerful in music the same roller coaster of emotions as in this you have also in the g minor prelude which I made a video recently, you can access it by clicking on this thumbnail. And if you would like to become a little bit more close to the project and also get access to multiple practicing sessions in which I just sit at my clavichord, the piano or the organ and practice music while explaining the things that I'm doing, as getting access to a lot of other content, there is a Patreon page. You can access that by the link in the description box and I would be very much looking forward to meeting you over there. For now, thanks for watching. We see each other very soon again. Bye.